Direct Golf TV, dedicated to improving your game. Welcome to Direct Golf TV. I'm Tom Denby, the Academy Director for the John Letters Golf Academy. Now we want to bring to you a very unique three-part series that's going to help you to create the perfect golf swing. So we're going to give you three different ways to improve and three different ways to develop that. Now when I teach people day to day, the fundamentals generally are the first things that aren't correct. So therefore, you can't create a perfect golf swing, we can't create a perfect strike. So to start us off with this video, we're going to give you an idea of how to create the perfect grip. So not only how to create that grip but also how then to take it onto the golf course which is the number one key factor so if you can do it on the driving range pointless if you can't do it on the golf course so then into the second part we're going to talk about the posture and the stance and the alignment and give you an idea again how to take that onto the golf course and the last section is then going to give you a really good understanding about the perfect swing and therefore the perfect strike Now the grip's the most important part of playing the game of golf because it's the only thing that you have contact with the club, so it's the only thing that can get the club face working correctly. So we're going to start with the top hand and give you a really good idea of where your hand should sit when you're putting it onto the club. Now we've got four key elements we're going to make sure happens. We're going to make sure we're getting into the fingers and get a nice firm, firm hold in the fingers. Making sure that we're getting the pad in the top of your hand here working on top of the grip, which therefore places your left thumb in the correct position and then therefore make sure we can see the correct amount of knuckles on the back hand there. So we'll start with where it sits in the fingers, we're looking at the second crease of your index finger there, okay, and then we're putting it through to above your little finger there. So we're going to make sure it sits across there firstly. Now the main reason it sits at an angle across your fingers is because the club sits at an angle, so it's not sitting straight, it's sitting nice at that angle. So we're going to make sure that we place it across there first. So once we've got it into there, what you want to be trying to feel is that we get the fingers doing the holding. Now the key to the pressure is about 3 out of 10, so not too tightly, not so light that your wrists are going to flop around just nice and soft. So what we're then going to create from here is the pad on the top of your hand here, we're going to sit that on top of the grip there. Now these two then become your support mechanism if you like, so you've got your fingers, the top of the pad there, they're the things that are doing the holding and again only about 3 out of 10. Now what supports the club at the top of the swing is then where you place your thumb. Now this is very important, we want to make sure we've not got a long thumb, we're going to make sure we're pulling it back and creating a nice short thumb here. And most importantly, we're going to make sure it's parallel down the side of the grip. Okay, so if we put that on top of the grip there, it's not quite in the right place. So if your hand wraps over, it goes parallel down the side. And then from there, that ensures that we can see two knuckles. So in a slight recap there, we've got in the fingers, we've got the pad of the hand here sitting where the butt end of the club is. We've got the thumb parallel to the right hand side there for a right hander and then we can see the two knuckles there and a nice 3 out of 10 pressure. So now we've touched on the left hand, we're going to work on the right hand, so the bottom hand. And this is actually an important part of actually getting power into the golf club. Now, the key thing with the right hand, just like the left hand, is making sure we get it into the right positions. So again, we're going to break it into, into a couple of sections here. So we've got to make sure where it sits in the fingers. Then we've got to make sure where your thumb and the crease of your right hand sits. And then we're going to talk a little bit about where your little finger is going to sit to connect your hands together. So to start with, where are we going to put it in the fingers? So it's slightly different to the, to the top hand. Instead of putting it through an angle, we're actually going to put it straight through the middle of your fingers. So we've got the middle creases of your middle two fingers there. So we're going to make sure we sit those at the back of the grip there first, okay? So we want to make sure we grip on with those fingers initially. Now from there, we've then got the lifeline of your right hand, and this is a very important part of it. The lifeline of your right hand was made to sit on top of the thumb of the left hand, okay? So it sits nicely into there. So as you look down onto the handle, you're not going to be able to see your left thumb, and your thumb of your right hand has actually sat over the top of the grip there. So it's down the left hand side of the grip, which is the opposite to where it was with the left hand or the top hand. So we've got it into the fingers there and we've sat it over the top. So I'm a firm believer your hands were made to play golf and that's why that is fitting into there. Now we've got how we actually connect your hands together. Now this is a very important part of it. Now the key to this is not to lose where your hands sit. So we've got what I've got here, which is the baseball grip, which is just your two hands or the 10 finger grip. Okay, then we go into the interlocking grip, which is where the little finger right hand interlocks 
with the index finger of your left hand. Now, I'm not a massive fan of this, and if you're a beginner, don't try this. This is too much to take on too soon, and you're gonna end up gripping it too tightly. Or, on the flip side of that, we've got the overlapping grip, which is we've got the little finger of your, of your right hand overlapping the crease or the finger of your left hand there. Now, this is the easiest one to get right because you can grip it nice and softly and just keep it into those fingers. So we've still got it into the fingers, we've connected your hands together, and everything fits snugly together. So we've placed the hands in the right place now, we've got a good hold of it. Now, the most important part, once you've got your hands in the right place, is then the pressure in your hands. So what we're trying to make sure is we have a nice light hold, and a great little tip for this to get a feel of what the pressure should be, is if you grip that club as tight as you can, and that gives you 10 out of 10 on your scale, you're then gonna release that to three out of 10, and that three out of 10 pressure you wanna try and maintain, and as soon as you release it, you're gonna feel everything relax. Now, a great little checkpoint to make sure your hands are in the right place is how we can then hinge the club vertically up and down. So it's a great little checkpoint to make sure that your hands can work in the right way, your wrists can work in the right way. So you know if you've got the grip right, you're gonna be able to hinge this up and down like a hammer, but it also helps you to feel that three out of 10 pressure as well and keep that relaxed. So now we've talked to you about how to get the grip, we're gonna give you an idea of how to do this on the golf course, the most important place to do it. So we've got a shot here into the green and we're gonna give you a routine that's gonna help you get the grip every time, but most importantly, get lined up every time. So we're gonna make sure we start behind the ball on every shot so that we can have a look at the target, but most importantly, we can then relate the club and the grip to that target line. So if I was to set the club here, behind the ball there and get the shaft going through the ball to your target. You can then get an imaginary line to your target. But more importantly, we can get the club face square in the position we want it in before we put the grip on. So if you put the grip on without the club face being square, obviously the ball is gonna go off in the wrong direction. So if we get the leading edge of the golf club, which is the bottom part here pointing straight up to the sky, that's then in that square position. Now, what we're gonna do from there is always build the grip. So we're gonna keep gripping the shaft with the right hand and build it with the left hand. Now, most importantly with this is we wanna make sure we're definitely coming from underneath so we can see everything happening that we've talked about so far. So we're keeping the club head square in the fingers mushy part over, thumb and two knuckles. Okay, so once you're happy that's good, we can then take the right hand away. So we've still got the club head square because we're holding it with your right hand and we've still got the shaft going to the target and relating it to where we want to go. So from there now I can bring the right hand in, I can come from underneath, I can get the second crease, the middle two fingers like we talked about, lifeline on top of the thumb, and then we're then into that good hold. So what I like to do then is a couple of those hinges we talked about earlier to get that nice light hold and we're now ready and prepared to hit the shot. So because we started behind it, we've lined ourselves up, got the grip, and then we're in to hit the golf shot. So that's the grip for you. It's so important that you follow those processes to make sure you get your hands in the right place. But most importantly, I have what's called a 50 ball rule. So practice this from the range. If you tried something, one particular task for 50 goals, you'd feel fairly happy you could do it at the end of those 50 goals. So every shot at the range for 50 balls, if you walk away, do the process and do the routine we just talked about, it's not gonna take long to get you feeling that grip right. So walk away, start again, and make sure that you do that every shot. So it just gives you that really good focus on where you want the hands to go. Now, obviously this is part one. We've got two other parts to this. The second part's gonna be all about the stance and the alignment and the posture, and the last part's all about the swing. To watch more tips and drills videos that will help improve your game, visit www.directgolftv.com.